Hi there, welcome to the Whiskey Tango Farm YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over what we do to prepare a brooder for our baby quail. So before you put your baby quail in your brooder, you're going to want to make sure that they're dry and fluffy. Typically, if they spend 24 to 48 hours in the incubator, they'll dry off and they're fine. And then you can proceed with this step. We personally use Sterilite tubs. Um, you may need more than one depending on how many quail you hatch out. Typically, you want about six quail per square foot so that they have enough room to run around and there's enough food to go around and everything. We start by putting in blue shop towels. We find that they're more absorbent and not quite as slippery as regular paper towels, but you can also use wood shavings. You just want to make sure that it's really low dust. Yeah, one of the reasons why we start with shop towels is that they are easier to clean, especially in the first week or two of the quail's life. And we find that we go through a lot less wood shavings and a lot less um, mess gets into the quail waterers. Um, shavings tend to get in there and it's hard for them to drink and everything. Having the paper towel allows them to have access to water all the time and we don't have to worry about them getting filled up with shavings. Speaking of water, um, you have a couple different options for waterers for getting your quail water. Um, there are specific bases for quail. Um, you, you can find a lot of the chicken waterers at feed supply stores and stuff. Um, we get ours online and from our local feed mill. Uh, it's just a little more um, narrow of a moat so that they can't physically go in there. Baby quail like to think that they can swim, but they cannot. In fact, they will go in there and if they get wet, they will get cold and they will die, unfortunately. Um, if you cannot find a quail waterer, that's completely fine. You can also use a regular chicken waterer. And then just make sure you put something in the moat area. So you can use some rocks that you have around the house or we just use uh, like clay marbles that work just fine. Um, for the first couple days of their life, we actually just sprinkle the food on the ground around the feeder so that they can kind of find where it is. What we do on about day two or three um, is we put their actual feeder in there instead of just laying the food out on the bottom of the brooder. Um, usually about that time they're, they're good enough to reach into the chicken feeders that we use. We use the you know standard chicken feeder. Uh, so we'll just place them in there and then have a little bit of food on the ground yet and buy it. There's two options that we use for heating the quail. We have the basic brooder um, heat lamp like this that has a 100 watt or 200 watt light bulb in it. Um, and we just hang those above. Um, we like to use these in rare occasions when we don't have enough um, brooder plates available. Uh, brooder plate is another option that you can use. Those are nice and they stay low and the chicks just crawl underneath them and heat, keep heated. Um, a good thing to use with these is a the thermometer underneath if you want to tell what the temperature is. You can do it ahead of time before you put the quail chicks in there just so you get an idea what the temperature is. Um, we don't use the thermometer in our brooders, all we do is we watch the quail and how well the quail do. So if the quail are huddled up underneath the light or and piled on top of each other, we lower the light down a little bit. If the um, quail are spread out all to the very edges of the tote, we'll raise it up a little bit and we'll just keep an eye on that as they go. Um, when you want to place the light, you want to place it away from the food and water. So you want to keep your food and water on the separate side of the tote. So that way they're not um, getting overheated or anything like that, um, trying to eat or drink underneath the light. You want them to be able to run around and get enough food. You don't want to place the food and water too far away. If you have a colder environment, um, they might not want to go out there and get food or water. So you kind of want to 
have a good balance of the temperature throughout. We personally like the um, brooder plates as well. For one, they're adjustable. For two, they use a lot less electricity. And for three, we feel much safer with them. The heat lamps, they can be a fire hazard, so please use them carefully and make sure that they're secured well. Um, because if you're using wood shavings, for instance, and that were to fall, it is hot enough that a fire will start. Um, and that's kind of a scary situation. So um, we're trying to kind of stock up on our brooder plates and stuff, and there's a lot of different brands out there. Um, so you can just do your research and see which ones you like best. At about a week and a half to two weeks, you want to start weaning the coil off of the heat. So you're going to take the brooder lamp and just kind of raise it up ever so often, um, every couple, every day or so, just raise it up a little bit and get them off the heat. Typically by three weeks, um, the quail are ready to be off heat completely because they're fully feathered and they can regulate their own body temperature. Right about a, a week, week and a half, um, I also do recommend that you put a lid of some sort on here. Um, that's about the time they like to start learning how to fly and jump pretty far. Um, and they will actually come fly out. Um, especially if you have them in a home environment, um, you don't have much room and you do have animals, you know, cats or anything like that. Um, it's just their natural instinct to go chase after that quail and um, they will eat it. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have some kind of lid, even if it is just a piece of hardware cloth on top and it's just simple, just I recommend putting something on there. As we mentioned in our live stream this last week, we are gonna do a giveaway for reaching a small milestone of 100 subscribers. Um, it'll be for a 60 count box of hatching eggs. All you need to do is be a subscriber to our channel, like this video, and comment below whiskey tango farm hatching eggs and we will do the drawing on september 1st at our on our live stream at 7 p.m central so please join us there to see the announcement you're going to want to make sure that you're cleaning your brooder often uh, baby quail eat a lot which means that they also poop a lot and it can be quite messy and it's pretty stinky um, if they are not dry uh, they can get sick, which you obviously don't want, and you want to keep the smell down for your own sake. We also use um, sticky notes, and then we tape them to the tubs. We'll write down the date that they hatched, how many are in there. Um, that way we know when they should start laying, and if somebody asks us for a specific age of quail, we can tell them that. It also helps us keep track of which breeder cage they were out of if we were doing any like test breeding or hatching, anything like that. Overall, there's not much that you need to stress about when putting your quail in the brooder. Just make sure that you're watching them to make sure they're not too hot or cold. Um, adjust your heating plate or your brooder light accordingly. And then of course, make sure that they always have access to fresh food and water. Um, if they do run out of food or water because they are so small, um, it can cause mortality pretty quickly. Every Wednesday night, we have a live Q&A for any questions that you might have. Um, 7 p.m. Central. Thanks for watching. Bye.